Um, hello. I'm really interested in how your artwork is inspired by your know, thinking um, away from your everyday life. Like the idea that you can communicate with animals, I mean, that's not a common American idea, like telepathic, you know, and building things because your animals want you to. And also your connection with your parents' home, and then um, the idea of which all of us who come from immigrant families think of as what is your home, you know? Do, do you want to go back home to where your grandparents lived or where you were born? For example, my daughter now lives in New York where I was born, but she was born in San Francisco. But I have a good feeling that she's there in my home state. And um, so the idea of the fragility of home is like that. And also when I went back to China with my parents while they were alive, um, the, the Chinese man who was giving us a tour said, you're home now, you know, you can have whatever you want. Because I think what I wanted was the Chinese breakfast not the tourist, you know, bacon and eggs breakfast they had in the hotel. You know, I asked for porridge, and he said, well, you're home now, you can have what you want. So I, I just really enjoyed that inspiration in your art, because it's so heartwarming to feel like um, your immediate environment isn't necessarily what makes you, but you have other connections. Um, it's, it's, it's um, this idea of home, I, I think I started the talk by saying it's nice to be home, um, but I think home for me has always been quite uh, hard to, to grapple with. I've moved around a lot over the course of my life. Um, and you mentioned this thing about it being nice that your daughter has gone back to, to where you were from. Um, my mother and father were both in different ways um, estranged from their families. And so they came to the United States uh, with, with quite a lot of difficulty. And uh, you know they quickly took America as their home. And for me to go back to Hong Kong in 2005 as an adult was very strange for them. For them to work so hard to to get here, and for me to run run back that way. Um, and and so my my sense of home has always kind of been uh, discontinuous. You know, places where I have you know friends and family have uh, important memories. And so it's 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 a, it's a very fluid concept. Um, before I sort of became an artist, uh, I was working as a research psychologist. And so in going back to Hong Kong, it was really interesting that I was able to experience things that I am um, connected to by history, but distanced from in terms of uh, a, a sort of tangible uh, connection. You know, my, my parents sort of outlawed the speaking of Chinese in our house after my grandmother passed away when I was eight. Uh, to aid assimilation, it was one of these things where they did they wanted they wanted me to be a part of where I was, um, and so to go back to almost look at where I came from and my own familial histories um, through the lens of a researcher uh, was was something that that aided and sort of created the the sorts of uh, approaches that that sort of propagated my practice. And just to follow up on that, that was a really touching story and it's really interesting to hear um, the idea of where we travel to, where do we belong. And I think the reason the subject matter is always of interest to me is because it's something that applies to everyone, immigrant or not. You know, I talk to my students, I talk to my friends, everyone's constantly looking back to the beginning, really looking to the future either to establish a home or making that connection again if it was broken or um, um, swayed to a different direction. So I think it is my hope that when, when I'm working with something, that I'm offering something that's meaningful to, to not maybe not everyone, but to as many people as possible. And that's something that we can all respond to and maybe think back to our own personal history, our own cultural background. And, um, yeah, I think that will be a meaningful exchange and experience. Just, just to um, respond to the value, I think that was one of the really striking, powerful things I think about your presentation was thinking about home is also a state of constant reinvention. You know that as you try to work with that, thinking, reaching out in deep history 
connecting to your present, but also reconfiguring the process. And the way that you use non-conventional materials, particularly the wax piece, I mean, it's quite extraordinary. Um, that that, I mean, I, I think it underscores, it, in my very scholarly talk, I was trying to get at that point, you know, that, that it's, it's kind of a, her, this issue of heritage, you know, is something that rather than seeing it as confining, rather, it's a kind of a portal, or, and I wonder maybe you want to be looking out to I think sometimes it's seen as a burden. I, I mentioned um, earlier, during my um, earlier years here in America, there's the need to run away. There's the need to speak better English and understand the cultural norms to try to fit in. And then there will be the time that I realize I need to go back to who I was, where I came from, to be, to be more honest to myself. But I think that cycle is extremely useful. And the cycle doesn't just happen one time. Over the years, it happens again and again. So you, you need to de depart or step away. Then you need to return with a new perspective and maybe a better understanding to be able to embrace it. And I think, for me, the show at CCC was my first return. How do I honestly and comfortably be Chinese and embrace what I've know what I'm familiar with, what brings comfort, and um, the connection with home, and, and not shy away from that. And that takes courage. And I, I think through that, we grow and become better artists and, and people. Yeah, I think it, it really is a continual process of understanding oneself. And I think it's one of the reasons that I sort of stepped away from social science and into the arts was because I didn't feel like there was a place for affect. Um, I, was, I was forced to kind of remove the human element from what I was doing, and I was doing a lot of work that brought me into close contact with um, at-risk communities, and, and, and that the, the extraction of feeling from the, the process of exploring was something that didn't feel right to me. It didn't, it didn't sort of, um, it didn't sit right with me. And when, when I think about, you know, the impact of culture and, and, and what all of these things uh, come to mean, it, to me it's always really been a way of allowing myself to, it's almost like therapy, you know, uh, to, to, to understand, you know, where these tendencies, where these sorts of affective responses uh, trace back to. Oh, I, I see a question in the back, so. Uh, it's already passed the mic. Hi, thank you so much, both of you, for um, being part of Shinrei in the beginning and then now. The question that I have is, back then, if you kind of put yourself back then as an artist, what would you say were your main concerns as an artist then? And what are they today? And what do you see in terms of the work that you're doing today compared to back then? What, what has changed for you or what has remained the same? I think I was a lot more concerned about being objective back then. I think it was still kind of at a period in my practice where I was very considerate of, of, not, of not taking voice away from any sort of populations that I was purportedly representing. You know, as a person that was of Chinese descent, raised in the United States, extracting imagery from uh, cultural traditions that I was tangentially related to. I think I spent a lot of time wanting to limit my, my personal involvement. And I think as time has gone on, I have uh, come to understand that everything uh, that I, I, I touch is going to be marked with my own subjectivity. And uh, to, to be honest about that, as opposed to trying to, to, to hide that, or, or to kind of extract it from the process um, it has been a slow discovery or slow realization over the last, over the last, I guess it's six years since that show. So for me, it's been exactly 10 years. Um, it's been a great 10 years. 
back then, I think I, I want to echo what Abby said, you know, when we were younger or the organization was smaller, things were just done. Let's jump in and get this done. I was thrilled to be given this opportunity and it was a challenge. It was a, a good sized space. And how do I make something that's relevant? I think that is a question that I was thinking back then that is still something I think about now all the time as a Chinese American artist or Asian American artist. I don't want to make work that's just cultural. I don't want to make work that, that's only pointing out how we're different, as I mentioned earlier. Um, how is this relevant to my audience, the Chinese American audience, and how is this relevant to the Western audience? How do I make that connection through the work? And I think a lot of times the work does just take on its own force, and then I follow. And I do think, looking back, it was a simple and productive time. And I did have a lot more doubts back then. You know, is, is this voice relevant? Is this work meaningful enough? Is it doing what I'm hoping it will do? But 10 years later, I realized this conversation needs to continue. And all the good work that CC is doing really needs to continue somehow in some form that's supportive of young artists like myself 10 years ago. And um, I think it's good for the whole society. Uh, I'd like to ask both of you, I mean, each of you has talked about the importance of actually doing the project in Chinatown. That's it. And so I, I, I think that when, when we you know, consider the importance of, of Chinese culture science and the work that it's done, the opportunity to actually engage with the community here in, what, in different ways clearly has, has been impactful for both of you. And I wonder if you can talk about that as a takeaway for you to be able to do this work. I think one of the things that, that um, is always important to me in a project is to account for, you know, uh, like Bailey mentioned, the multiplicity of audiences. Um, you know, if there's an attempt made to create an objective statement that's universally resonant, I find that it's it's just too big of a too big of a um, too big of a task. Um, where I think things really start to work is when you find overlapping circles and for for you to sort of keep in mind uh, multiple intended uh, readings. And, and I think in my own work, um, I deal with a good deal of nostalgic imagery. I, I deal with a good deal of, of things that are not going to be detectable or recognizable by every person that kind of comes in. And I, I see the recognitions and I see the interactions of sub-communities to the work as part of the kind of bigger picture. I mean, these things live on. Uh, what you see in the other room is sort of concatenated from projects that were made over the course of you know, the, the past half decade, and they, they make new sense every time they're kind of recombined. And I think one of the things that I really respected about the opportunity to come here was I was able to actually pilot test a lot of these things with micro-communities and, and to, to, to carry that forward into the, uh, the echoes of the work as it continued. I think that's an excellent point, where we have a very specific cultural community here, it's an opportunity to do something specific in response to this community, but then this work continues on and it expands and takes the influence with it to a much broader sphere. For me, working here within the Chinatown community was really, um, it was like coming home to a home I've never been to. Um, I was an uh, international student. I was studying in these universities, and you know, I have a few professors or classmates, but there wasn't necessarily a community. So I made work, I showed it in galleries where most of my audience come in, they're just um, everyday people. Coming here really gave me that lens and that portal to maybe take a very different look of my own work. And then with that understanding, I feel like I then can take this work with a better, um, how do I say, like, I think I understand my responsibility a little bit more. It's a new perspective, it's a new community for me, even though this is the Chinese American community that I feel like I returned to for the first time. So that was really special. 
May I ask, how are we doing for time? So I, I do have one more question. Uh, we have two minutes? One minute. Uh oh. Well, I said it was yes or no question. <laughs> We're talking for the moment, but later on, I want to ask you about the post human and the fact that you're getting you know, all this work on the animal realm and animal communication um, also points to a very different dynamic way of thinking about the world and interrelationality of the human and the animal that also again resonates. You know, with aspects of when you think about Chinese philosophy, and you know, uh, but then of course you also think of Joseph Beuys and his, um, you know, which I can't help but do, uh, not to throw a Western interpretation on it. My rabbits weren't dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but anyway, so we will continue this. Thank you very much. <laughs>